In this Harlequin Rip Tip, we're going to look at the procedure that should be performed whenever you are setting up a film output device, an image setter, or whenever your film density is not correct. This is a very important procedure because if your exposure is not correct, you can, among other things, lose gray levels. That is, you can create posterizing and stepping during the calibration process. Basically, smooth vignettes and quality halftones are not possible if your exposure is too far off. Running and analyzing an exposure sweep requires that you have a good quality densitometer, which is functioning properly and calibrated. Choosing the proper densitometer and calibrating it is beyond the scope of these Harlequin rip tips. If you have questions about this, please contact us at CompuDoc or contact your film supplier for guidance. The easiest way to determine the proper exposure is by using the exposure sweep ability of the Harlequin rip. Not all image setters allow for control of exposure from the rip, however, finding the proper exposure is still very important. We can only cover density settings controlled by the rip in these tips. Consult your image setter manual or consult with CompuDoc or your image setter support person for help setting exposure on an imaging device. To run an exposure sweep, the first thing you want to do is open up the print calibration window. From the print calibration window, choose the device you're going to run the sweep on and choose monochrome only. We don't need to run for colors here. Go down to the bottom and choose the from and to values. These are the exposure values that are going to be sent to the image setter as it's creating these sweeps. In this case, I used 160 to 185 in steps of five. This will create six calibration strips. These values will differ for every image setter. So the values I'm using here may not work for the image setter you use. Next, press the print exposure sweep button and then move over to look at the calibration strips that were created. I'm going to open one of the calibration strips up in the viewer so that we can see what it will look like. I'm also going to show you that on each calibration strip, it reports the exposure value that was sent to the image setter. As I zoom in in the upper left hand corner of the exposure sweep, you can see that on this test strip, the exposure value used was 165. Let's take a quick look at a different exposure sweep so you can see that a different exposure value will be used on each one. As you can see, the exposure value for this sweep is set to 180. The next step is to image and examine your exposure sweeps. While I will be illustrating concepts on the screen, the following information applies to your imaged film. The different clues for proper exposure that I will be pointing out will not be visible using the RIP viewer. You will have to examine each imaged exposure sweep and apply these concepts. When the calibration strip is imaged in negative, there is a way to visually verify that you are not overexposing the film. That's why I like to work in negative. Returning to our illustration, I'm going to zoom in on this lower right-hand corner of the calibration strip. You'll notice that there are a number of very small lines here. Each of these lines is exactly one pixel wide. The reason I'm showing you this is because it is possible with many of today's films to overexpose the film without actually showing a major change in the density. So if you're reading the film with a densitometer, the reading at a correct exposure may be a density of four whereas the reading at an incorrect exposure may be at a density of 4.1. On properly exposed film, you will be able to see these lines with a magnifying device like a loop. At lower resolutions like 1200 dpi, they should be visible with the naked eye. If you cannot see these lines on your film, you are overexposing it. The next thing I'd like to zoom in on is the 50% dot on our calibration strip. An uncalibrated Euclidean screen produces a checkerboard at 50%. This is another way of telling if you're over or underexposing your film. Once you have exposed and processed your film, look closely at the checkerboard. If the corners of the black squares are overlapping each other, then you're overexposing. If the corners of the white squares are overlapping each other, 
then you're underexposing. Not every rip is set to use a Euclidean dot. This is a setting in your page setup and will affect everything you rip. If you are using a different shape dot for your daily output, you may want to make a special page setup for calibration that does use a Euclidean dot. Calibrating with the Euclidean dot will create a curve that will work fine for other dot shapes. So calibrating using a Euclidean dot won't negatively affect your calibration process. The next step after imaging all your exposure sweeps is to read the densities and the 50% dot value on each sweep. What we're looking for is as close to a 50% as we can get. Try not to deviate more than a few decimal values from your recommended density. Going darker than the recommended density to get closest to an accurate 50% dot is more desirable than going lighter. Achieving a perfect 50% dot is best because the majority of films on the market today are self-linearizing. This means that at the proper exposure, all of the screen values will be a plus or minus two from their ripped value, and you will not need to do any further calibration beyond choosing the proper exposure. If you cannot achieve a perfect 50%, Try a different range or smaller steps between exposures. Run sweeps until you get a value that gives you a good density and, if not a perfect 50, then a 50 that is plus or minus 8%, a 42 or 58 at worst. In our case, the recommended density on our film is 4.0, and we get a perfect 50 at an exposure of 180 or a density of 4.2. The next step is to enter the new exposure value. Remember, this process only works for devices where the exposure is controlled by the RIP. In the upper right-hand corner of the page setup window, you will see settings for resolution and processing. Type the new exposure value here and press OK to save the changes. This new exposure value will now be used for all output film using this page setup. If the procedures outlined here do not work for you, the problem could be anything from a dirty mirror on your image setter to incorrect chemistry mixture or the wrong settings on your processor. We suggest you seek professional help locating the problem. This covers the basics of running exposure sweeps. The next step is to calibrate or linearize your film if necessary. Look for a different RIP tip to cover this procedure. If you appreciate our video tips, please visit us at our website, www.c-doc.com and consider letting us help you with your pre-press and press, service, supply, and equipment needs.